my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Apologia Radio. This is the gospel heard around the world. I'm Jeff. They call me the ninja. That's Luke the Bear. What up? And, of course, and I'm going to pause here for a second until she gets the microphone. There you go. That's Joy the Girl. Hello. And Marcus King Ginger on the ones and twos. Hello. What's up, y'all? We're back. We're back. We're we actually, back. We're, we're back. Yeah, I'm, I'm back. Yeah. Three weeks, man. It's been long. Right. It's too long. Big time. So that was Psalm 110.1, y'all. That's the most quoted reference uh, from the Old Testament in the New Testament. Psalm 110.1, the Apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians 15, gives a portrait, a picture of history. Where are we going? He quotes Psalm 110.1, says, That's what's up right now. Jesus is king. He is reigning on his throne. And all of history is God putting all things under Christ's feet. And then total victory. Jesus delivers the kingdom over the Father. So that's what's up with that verse. And we're back. Doing some of that stuff, actually, in the island of Kauai. You want to talk about that for a sec? Just for a Let's minute? Let's do it. So, uh, I headed out a little bit early to Kauai uh, and took a little bit of a sabbatical and then uh, actually met up with the team afterwards, and we spent a week with the team on the island of Kauai for our church plant. We, God willing, are planning a church uh, January of 2018. That's our first mm-hmm. worship service somewhere in there. And so this is our last trip before we actually send the families out uh, to plant a church there. So the island of Kauai has huge problem with drug and alcohol addiction, alcohol and methamphetamines, actually a, a significant uh, suicide rate. Right. Um, a lot with the youth, of course, but there's there's others other age in that too. But, I mean, a lot of youth suicide. So living in paradise and still not happy. Mm. Uh, but so that's what's up. So they're also heavily, heavily impacted by the cults, Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnesses. You got a lot of Roman Catholic influence there, Church of Christ, those sorts of things. Uh, and we actually ran into some uh, Latter Day Saints, some Mormon missionaries. Yes, yes we did. In uh, Hana Pepe, that's the name of the town. Mm-hmm. Hana Pepe uh, ran into four missionaries out there. Actually, got a chance to record the conversation. You can see that. At Apologia Studios on YouTube. Hey guys, I got to make a quick interruption here. Okay. Uh, can we uh, not have the music because it can't be cleared for our special guest? Yeah, for I'll, the show. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll I'll turn it down. All right. There you go. Okay. All right. <laughs> special. I was. I love your. I love your like announcer. Yeah, well, was broadcast very voice. Very professional. <laughs> Try well, I'm, not, very I'm professional. not gonna. I'm not gonna. Uh, I didn't want to um, give away who our guest was. That's right. We have a special guest in the studio today, and we're gonna introduce you to him in just a minute. But I'll, I'll give you guys a chance. We're gonna make him wait. You're gonna, like, keep him on. Keep him on ice. He's good. <laughs> He's good. Uh, and so, what, what's up? What happened when we were gone, Joy? What? Anything happened in the studio? Anything special? Uh, I think I know something. One thing special happened. It stayed really, really clean. Did it, I see? That's yes. And I got a lot of work done because no one was bothering me. <laughs> And that's it. That's all. Wait, what was your one special thing? Well, the one thing that we finally got done. It actually finally well, yeah. happened. We started, I think, about the day after you left, we got our first kits sent out. And then um, sort of got in the swing of that. We have a process for it now. So now they're going out quite a bit faster. Um, so as of right now, I think we have 101 kits out. Sent out. Wow. Yeah. So if you guys don't know what that means... Uh, Some of you probably haven't... Actually, by the time they're listening to this, everyone may have gotten theirs already okay. that were sent. So, and then we have a few more, and we're at the end of our list as far as it goes right now. Good. So endabortionnow.com is the site that's launched right now. So local churches across the United States are going to endabortionnow.com. Getting uh, linked up with uh, the movement and uh, getting the training, getting all the video and the resources. And what we do as a church is we actually send out to these churches a kit. And in the kit, you have signs to communicate with the mothers and fathers going into the abortion mills. Um, we also have tracks and information you guys can hand out. So uh, some of you guys have been sending us pictures of your kits arriving. Uh, we want to tell you how much that means to us. We're grateful for that. So, and so happy to see that happening we've been looking forward to that. Like actually seeing the kits in your hands right. and out of our garage. <laughs> right. Basically. So yeah, absolutely. If you haven't signed up yet, go to endabortionnow.com. You guys can get connected over there. Uh, if you have questions, you guys can send a message to either, uh, well, probably to Zach first, and he can answer any questions you guys have. Uh, but Joy and uh, Zach, thank you guys both, actually, for You're welcome. all that work you it's guys are pleasure. doing. Yeah. So uh, let's introduce our guest, right? So we're in the studio right now, uh, Apologia Studios, underground bunker, in, uh, right outside of Phoenix, Arizona, uh, in our makeshift studio, because 
Uh, the set for next week with Jeff Durbin is is in the other room, and it's basically done. <clears> just <throat> polishing it, polishing stuff right now. But we're in our makeshift studio, and we have a very special guest. We actually have guests, plural. Uh, yeah. Vice yes. is here. We love Vice. We do. I watch Vice all the time. Mm, it's true. It's the like my favorite documentary crew. Yeah. Right. I mean, I don't know who's better, Shane or our guest, in terms of like host and. I don't well, know. Well, Shane has been to North Korea, so. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, not as scary as maybe this is. <laughs> Good point, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I would like to go to North Korea. Yeah. North Korea. Yeah. North Korea. North. North, North. <laughs> North Korea, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry. I'm just trying to get my, my voice down. Okay, so anyway, Vice is here with us filming a documentary uh, around Apologia Church, Apologia Studios, and Abortion Now. And we have a very special guest, um, uh, somebody we, we've watched and we know who he is, Jamali Maddox. And welcome to the show, Jamali. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm don't really, you... really happy to be here. This That's, is like this. the most epic yeah. voice to have on Apologia yeah. Studios. So now like John Sampson no, he has... he puts John Sampson to shame. Completely. Yeah. John Sampson's basically a, totally basically, American yeah. now. Mm -hmm. That's Who's a John Sampson? Is he a British dude? He's a British dude. But Long he, time he, ago. he lost his way. Yeah, he's lost he did, his way. Yeah, he well, he came shame. to minister to the, <laughs> the, the colonies. Damn shame. He can't minister to colonies. He's lost a bit. Yeah, he still keep, drinks his tea, though. You, you can keep him now. We don't want him back. Yeah, we don't want him back. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's, I'll, I'll ask you a question. So, Jamali, uh, what are you doing connected with Vice? What do you do? Who are you? Uh, I'm a, well, I'm a comedian. I've uh, been doing comedy since I was, well, seriously, since I was about 20s, maybe 18, uh, on and off. And uh, right now I make uh, documentaries. Uh, I've done one series last year. Well, I want to spoke to various groups around the world, and uh, this year we're centering more on like America, yeah, sort of uh, alternative ideas, maybe, and you know, sort of uh, different perspectives. So we we've seen some of the old se season mm -hmm. uh, stuff, and so I have to ask you the the name of the series, which almost stopped us from actually agreeing to do it, mm -hmm. was "Hate Thy Neighbor." Mm -hmm. Do you hate your neighbor? No, if we go and start, it's like, uh, uh, did, did they actually really need to stop you make, doing the film? Well, we well, cause, yeah. cause we would we abhor the idea of hating uh, our neighbor. So the yeah. name of the series it wasn't like, literary. It wasn't and, literal. And, 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 and Danny and them, they were <laughs> yeah. like, no, 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 we understand. <laughs> it's not about that. Yeah. But, so tell us about the series. Uh, what would, I mean, the, the, the first series, uh, I went and spoke to uh, various groups uh, who had very strong opinions about certain things. Uh, so I spoke to uh, uh, some considered hate groups, some considered not. And it's just a, 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 a just a bunch of people who sort of have uh, very strong ideals, which uh, the, the larger population maybe don't agree with or don't understand. And it's just trying to get a more of an understanding of their perspective. So I saw the one with the black supremacist. Oh, you did? You did see yes. that one? Yeah, that yeah, the black Israelite one. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did a we did a show on black Hebrew Israelites. Yeah. Um, and it exploded, dude. Mm. I mean, it it was like instant, instant. As soon as right. as soon as one person found out about the show, it just it flew, went crazy. Now we have so many videos online about us because we we did a show on Black Hebrew Israelites. Mm -hmm. So they're pretty intense. Man. Have you uh, have you debated with them? I've never actually. I think one time when I was like seventeen, I was traveling the country like mm. competing in martial arts. And I think I remember one time running into one on a street corner and he wasn't too abusive with me. Yeah. It was just like a moment. It just said something kind of weird to me. And he was like, Jesus was black. And I was like, that's cool. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Mm. But I mean, never got really into a conversation with one. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, the black is the like, so strange. One. I mean, I'm not, I'm not too versed with uh, biblical matters. But uh, I mean, to say that Jesus was a dark skinned man isn't an insane no. uh, perspective. I mean, you know, he grew up, you know, yeah. from that part of the world, probably would be of a darker skin and Very, a, of yes. a woolier hair. Uh, but it's, you know, the other stuff and the other interpretations, I think, is where people have the real problem. Right. Is where they think, you know, white people are going back into slavery and right. you know, all these type of things. Jesus is coming back to put uh, his boot on my neck. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a white person. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yes that, that's, that, that, that's, that's one of his. What, about, what do they say, Esau, right? Yeah, yeah, they big forget Harry Esau. Big Harry Esau. Yeah, yeah different tribes. Yeah. So they, they break down the, the 12 tribes into the lost people of uh, Israel. So right. it's like, but they think it's not uh, the people who claim to be Jewish now. Right. They think it's uh, claimed to be sort of like Native Americans, uh, various people. And they, they claim it from people who have suffered slavery in the modern world. Right. Is my, from right. what I understand. Right. Uh, but it's weird because uh, you ask them about like the Aboriginals in Australia. And they go, well, you know, and it's like those people have, you know, gone, like had their land stolen and right. different, but they don't have that. So it's a, it's a very, uh, it's a very complicated sort of, uh, it it, is. And, and it's, it's, you can't really, uh, unless you, I think unless you join it, 
you can't really understand it. So I never really left with a more of understanding that said white people going into mm. slavery. Right. Because it's, you know, you have to sort of like be versed in the Bible like they are. In that yeah, way. it was powerful because uh, when we did this show, just with a, with a buddy of ours that knows a lot about it and is engaged with them a bunch, it created this firestorm. And I have never seen so many racist comments <laughs> about white people come my way. And I was just like, well, that's interesting. Not then, as bad as the flat earth people, though. Yeah, they're not as... Yeah, the flat, <laughs> no, earth, the yeah, flat earth people are really... <laughs> flat earthers. Out, they, 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 they do. You do not want to mess with them flat they, earth no. people. Oh, my no, God. No. I've, spoken to, I've spoken to bad people. The flat earth people, I don't want them trolling me back. Right. They, right. they, they <laughs> show you flat they're, the worst. they're unrelenting. And you yes. can't really even debate it because it's like, you go, yeah, I mean, we're, we're both not scientists. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like we both don't... Like, but we know it's not. And they go, but how? And you go, yeah, yeah because it's not. Yeah, right. I mean, it's, we know it. Yeah, because I'm not stupid. Yeah. Um, oh but a yeah, buddy of ours, uh, he's a well-respected scholar and theologian. Yeah. Uh, he actually got, because of that, into a, into a dialogue with uh, a leading black Hebrew Israelite and got it. And it was really interesting because you saw like a lot of claims being made um, that are anti-historic, uh, historical, they just false, just patently false. From the Hebrews? From the, yeah, yeah the, the Hebrew Israelites. And um, so that was interesting to see like this, this, this movement, this cult kind of mm. rise up around a lot of things that they proclaim to people that just aren't true about mm. history. Uh, but I just saw, like, in the end, it was always about, like, just this hatred mm. just uh, for the white race mm -hmm. in many ways. So uh, that, was, that was interesting. But you did, so you did the series. I, I've seen some of it. I thought mm. it was actually really well done. Thank you. Um, so what are you doing with us? Um, I'm trying to get, because I, I know, uh, um, especially by the abortion debate, is uh, it's this sort of idea of uh, trying to get a more wider perspective of why you think it's murder. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Because right. it's like, that is a the very debated subject. Right. And it's like, I know, especially with, uh, you know, with uh, the new president now, and he's sort of um, seeing it more of that perspective, because mm -hmm. you just come from a sort of more, uh, uh, maybe a liberal idea right. with Barack Obama about, you know, and it's a sort of a, because the pro, I think the pro-choice and the pro-life debate is such a, a, a complex idea mm -hmm. and i've heard a lot of perspective of the pro-choice right you know being in being in media being in, you know what i'm saying sort mm -hmm. of being like living in london mm -hmm. very liberal place mm -hmm. uh, being in comedy around a lot of liberal people right and, it, and you know and it's sort of and it's like it, it goes through so many faceted uh, ideas it goes it's sort of like it's been a sort of churn through so many machines of sort of like you know the feminist ideas and you know all these different perspectives right it's just trying to get an understanding of of uh, of of why you don't agree with it Right. You know? No, we appreciate it. We're yeah. glad. And we love Vice. Mm. And so we think you guys are, are, are very skilled and, and good at what you do. Um, and, and, you know, and interestingly, uh, someone like Donald Trump, what bothered us initially is I know I, I grew up uh, hearing about Donald Trump. I was born in 1978. So, I mean, my whole life, Donald Trump's been on the news and television. Everyone knows who Donald Trump is. So I knew what Donald Trump uh, had believed before. And so when he started running for president and he started coming out as pro-life and saying the things that he was, I was very leery myself personally because I didn't know if I could buy it. Mm -hmm. And at this point in uh, where he's at today with what he's um, uh, not done uh, concerning the area of abortion, I, I felt like my concerns were warranted. I don't think that it was, was a genuine commitment to, to ending uh, the slaughter of children in our nation, to, to doing anything about abortion. It's interesting, too, and in, in especially near the, the tail end of his campaign, you saw, like Donald Trump, using a lot of the pro-life rhetoric, mm -hmm. pro-life language, uh, talking about overturning Roe versus Wade and putting judges in that would end uh, uh, Roe. Uh, but now here we are, what are we now, six seven months mm, yeah. seven months into his presidency and it almost seems like radio silence from right. President Trump on the issue of mm. abortion so we, we were very concerned ourselves that it just seemed like it was just a big if you, use, you think he's just using it for t uh, populist uh, sort of uh, yeah. uh, just to get people to vote for him yeah who do you need to vote for you uh, you need well you gotta get the Christian vote yeah. that's huge you gotta get the evangelical vote yeah. you gotta get the conservative vote and you know here are the key issues for the conservatives the evangelicals you've got mm. abortion pro-life and so I think that Donald Trump latched onto that and made mm. promises that I don't at this point believe that he has any um, commitment to actually see through mm. personally Why do, but do you think that's due to the political system because I mean it, to, to sort of if we're talking about like and I, and I know you probably believe from a biblical perspective, but if we're just talking about the the the, the political system we live in today is democracy mm -hmm. and sort of uh, this this sort of a uh, structural political system. Uh, it, you can't just change a law tomorrow. 
you know, because he has to go through certain uh, systems mm -hmm. and certain uh, facets to, to get to there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, would so do you think that he has a, 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 a intentions to do it, or do you think that he's fully just like totally uncommitted to it? Like, do you think that that should be his 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 uh, a goal every day is to wake up and to to try and end abortion? Yeah, I think that that's so. You got these major issues of injustice that I think we should address mm -hmm. with like an immediatist mindset. Mm -hmm. We should immediately stop the slaughter of children, right? Mm -hmm. Like if somebody said, like, well, how do you want to end the Holocaust with you know Jews being killed? Do you want to mm -hmm. do it over a period of you know thirty, forty years? I would say yeah, we can do that immediately. Let's try to let's do that quickly. Um, but in terms of abortion, in in terms of how the United States government system works. You have um, a system of government that was essentially created um, from Geneva. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean the, the most popular study Bible in the time of um, the American Revolution was the Geneva Study Bible. Uh, Calvin's Geneva produced so much of what we see in the American political system and governmental system. So we have checks and balances, of course. We have a process through which the people can get representation mm -hmm. and they can hold their government in check and accountable. However, we also have the the part of our system that allows for a lesser government to oppose a tyrannical government, right? Uh, we have the ability of uh, somebody who say a sheriff or a local city or governor to say to a higher government or to a, a cousin government, I don't, I'm not following that. I reject that great example right now. It's perfect is say Washington and Colorado. Uh, the federal government says no marijuana, yeah. right? It's against the law It's against federal law. Well, what, these lesser magistrates have done in Colorado and in Washington is they followed what is legal in our country and they've said, we don't agree with that law, we're not going to obey that law, and so we're going to legalize marijuana in our state. Mm -hmm. I think they had every right to do that, mm -hmm. and I think it was completely completely right to, to, to do that from their perspective for their state. Um, a lesser magistrate can resist in that way, and our government system allows that. But in this case of abortion, from our perspective, Jamali, um, abortion... Roe versus Wade is not a law. Mm -hmm. our, our system of government doesn't give the Supreme Court the right to create legislation. So our, our constitutional system says that, um, that it is up to the Congress <laughs> to legislate, right? Not to the Supreme Court. So we see in 1973 that Roe versus Wade, the Supreme Court gave a court opinion based upon false, false premises. They mm -hmm. said that what's in the womb is potential human life. We know biblically and biologically speaking, that's false. Um, but they, they had a decree that we believe this about abortion. And so all the states have essentially bought into a lie, and that is that Roe versus Wade is actually a law, and it's not. So any state in the United States now could criminalize abortion immediately at the state level by saying we reject Roe, and we're going to hold to the laws we have even in some cases in place today. So a great example, Jamali, is in Arizona today, there's a current law on the book, books that criminalizes abortion. Mm -hmm. It's never been changed never been altered nothing's ever it's it's current on the books and the reason it's not actually upheld is because we're under the false assumption that roe versus wade did something to those states laws when in fact it didn't so we would actually be of the perspective that um we don't need to work to overturn roe versus wade mm -hmm. because it's not a law um what we need to do is have state governments uphold the, their legal right as lesser magistrates to resist the opinion of the supreme court um, and uphold their state laws. Just like marijuana laws. Right, yeah, just yeah. like marijuana Just like laws. the governments are ignoring the federal you, government uh, as marijuana. Oh, sorry, sorry to cut you off. Do you think that uh, it should go down to a democratic vote of... Because so, if we're going to break it down to state level, say if we're, talk, if we're talking about America, we're breaking it down to every state as an individual country, uh, just because it's such a big country. Mm -hmm, right. <laughs> uh, so we're talking about individual states. That's how it's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So do you think that each state should vote on the, the law? So say, say, say if uh, Arizona won, mm -hmm. don't want abortion, and everyone's voted and it's got a higher percentage on votes, no more abort abortion. But then New York State, it overruled that, that, they, that they want to have a, le a legal abortion. Do you think that the government should still get involved in New York if they want legal abortion? I, I think that it should go down to states themselves yeah. to govern themselves. As a matter of fact, um, the government system in the United States was built in such a way as to be a republic, mm -hmm. right? So the way you described it is perfect. Like these almost individual countries in a union, like what they meant when they said union, they didn't mean what we have today, where it's really a federal government really running everything. They meant this is our thing. 
Mm -hmm. right? We're all individual sovereign states, but yeah. this is our thing. So I do think the states have the right responsibility just to say, this is what we're going to do. Yeah. And I do believe, Jamali, I think that if you, in the United States of America today, I think if you said, put it to a vote, yeah. let's let each state vote, I think that you would see abortion banned in virtually every state, except, for the, so? except for the known liberal ones, yes. Yeah. I do are you, believe are you, that. Are you quite libertarian in your political approach? Very. Yeah. Um, I think that if you took like the law of God, mm -hmm. And you applied the general equity of it to today and mm. said, let's make uh, our, our system look like what this is. Mm -hmm. It would be, it would look very libertarian. Yeah. Mm. It would look very libertarian. Um, so, yeah. 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 But I, I think Isn't that. Isn't part of like libertarianism as well, like freedom of choice? Uh, in a sense, except libertarianism, this is where libertarianism dies. Mm -hmm. Well, libertarianism dies because it's got the right ideal of personal freedom and personal responsibility and self-governance, right, and small, limited mm. government, that kind of stuff is like, in principle, I, it's absolutely right. I think that comes ultimately from Christian worldview to have that kind of idea. However, uh, where libertarianism dies and it will never get off the ground is it doesn't have an objective moral standard. Mm -hmm. Because you can say personal freedom and responsibility all you want, but if you don't have an objective standard of what is actually right and wrong, mm -hmm. you're just in a sea of confusion. Yeah. And so I think that's where libertarianism will, will always just yeah. do you fall think, dead. So do you think that, you see, because uh, I'm assuming that, correct me if I'm wrong, do you want to see America's law based on a Christian system of, uh, of law and justice, of what you perceive to be law and justice, right? Yeah. Uh, I, so if me, say if I'm a non-Christian, yeah. do you think I should have to live under the guidelines of, of, of a Christian morality if I don't believe in it? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a good question, um, and I think that if we were to ask it the other way, mm -hmm. um, same assumptions, we would see that we're talking about the same thing. Mm. So, for example, um, I, I, I know that you're you know, not a believer, not a Christian, mm -hmm. um, but you would probably want more of a secular society, right, democracy. That would yeah, be, I, 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 prefer, I prefer democracy to, right. to a, a theological uh, law and justice system. Yeah. Right, and, but he, the, the thing I would point to is that every system is a, is a theocracy. Every system is a theocracy. So, for example, we took elements of it. Yeah, yeah because you, because I mean, obviously, you know, uh, 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 ideas of Christianity, Islam, wh whatever, you know, just from years and years of, and they were like the powerhouses uh, politically for so many years. Yeah, and they're going to have certain parts of their theology or their their, their philosoph philosophical thought that we're going to take, like you know, don't don't kill people. Yeah, we'll have that. <laughs> we'll take that, yeah, yeah. D don't steal. Yeah, we'll have a bit of we that too. We love that, yes. You know what I'm saying? So, right. you know, they, we are going to take certain elements of that because there, there, there is a... You can't live without it. Yeah, there is a certain uh, moral standard that right. I think even a atheist and a Christian would share. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, I, think it's, I think if you get two decent people who are Christian and one's an atheist and you say, what do you think about murder? Or what do you think about, you know, a robbery? You probably, right. probably both agree we don't like it, right? But it's, uh, you know, it's the other things because there's, uh, there's other nuances. Right. I think that that people would disagree on. Of course. That probably wouldn't want to live under. So what's interesting is that um, the way that you illustrated that is actually really interesting. You mm -hmm. talked about Christians and atheists and even atheists borrowing saying, I like that from the Christian mm -hmm. worldview. We'll keep that. We'll agree, we'll agree on that. What I would point to is that the, the atheist is being inconsistent at that point because he has to borrow capital from the Christian worldview in order to live in a just society, a, an ordered world. Uh, but the atheist is living inconsistently with his own principles. So for example, when the atheist says, I think it's, absolutely wrong in society to murder and to rape mm -hmm. what i would say is that comports with christianity but just, so are we are we are we going along the perspective here that 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 christianity own morality then Do that christianity can can justify moral appeals objective yeah, but, moral but, appeals. but then it's, it sounds like that we're saying that christianity is the arbiter of morality well i'll i'll, I'll, I'll say it this way I'll give you something to shoot at yeah, yeah okay yeah. so what i would say is that the christian says say rape and murder are absolutely wrong mm -hmm. And the Christian has a basis to say that. We believe that we're in the image of God. God has spoken on rape and murder. He mm -hmm. condemns it. He calls it, you know, he calls it what it is. And he says, you're not to do it. That's a certain claim from God. Now, so when I say as a Christian, you're not to rape and to murder, I have a worldview that makes sense of that. Mm -hmm. But let's take, for example, the atheist. The atheist says, I believe that it's wrong to rape and murder as well. Yeah. I can ask the atheist, well, how do you justify that claim? Because you believe you live in a universe that's time and chance acting on matter, that your ancestors were fish and that there is no objective morality. Uh -huh. You see, so the atheist has to borrow from the Christian so, worldview to make sense of his yeah. own. But if we, if we go to countries where they don't have Christianity, mm -hmm. like, you know, they don't, they're not all raping and murdering each other. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's like they, 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 there is some inbuilt morality. Because they're in the image yeah. of God. We're all, we're all in the image of the same God. Yeah, yeah but what I'm saying is, it's like, 
is is so the Christian and the the atheist. If we're going along that perspective, mm-hmm. uh, you say that they, you know, that one can justify the claim and one can't. That's right. right? Is what I'm saying to you is is that you're not born with the innate idea saying like if someone didn't if you if it wasn't written in your text that you would commit the crime because you had no more back into it. Just what I'm saying because there's other countries where if we if we go to like a the middle of Papua New Guinea, yeah, and they they've never heard of Christianity, they've never heard of Jesus. They're not, they're not raping and murdering each yeah. other because well, they do. They they I mean, do I'm rape sure, and murder. I'm, I'm sure there is. So I'm the sure question there is, is a, a percentage. The of question that. is, and here, but, here's here's the here's the but rub. Not, but not, but it's not it's not enough to then say that it's not. I don't think it's enough of a percentage to then say, oh, it's because here's they don't the here's have the rub though. They do it. Those um, pagans, polytheists, mm. and Papua New Guinea. They can't justify. Yeah, yeah, they can't justify the condemnation of rape and murder that mm-hmm. takes place in their society, because they're in the image of God, and we're all in the image of the same God. We all know God in our heart of hearts, and we all have His law written within us. Mm-hmm. This is why atheists and Christians can look across the aisle and say that rape was wrong, but the, only the Christian has a worldview that can make sense of what they're saying. Mm-hmm. The atheist can say that's absolutely wrong. And if you really ask them, was well, it really absolutely wrong? They'll say, well, no, not absolutely wrong. It's all subjective. There's no absolute moral odds. I'll give you Dawkins' statement. Dawkins in his book, uh, River Out of Eden, says uh, the Richard universe... Dawkins. Richard Dawkins. Richard Dawkins. Yeah, uh, yeah, he says um, uh, that in River Out of Eden, he said that there's ultimately uh, cosmic indifference. He says there is no good, there is no evil. There's no good, there is no evil. Now, that's him being a consistent atheist at the moment, but he won't live that way. Mm -hmm. Because in order to live and breathe and move in this world, he has to borrow from God, borrow capital from the Christian worldview in order to make sense of his world. He'll say there's no absolute morals, but then he'll live in such a way as there actually are. So he'll live like a Christian, like an image bearer of God, but he'll deny it with his profession of atheism. So what's interesting here in in terms of like someone says, really? Really? You want a society where people um, all love Jesus and they all like, or you know, they all believe that loving God and loving neighbor are the most important thing. You want a society that actually points to God's laws of, of, of standards of justice. I would say absolutely, but so does the atheist. Mm-hmm. The atheist also wants his ultimate. So, for example, let's ask it the other way. You asked a moment ago about you really want people to like me as a secularist, not like to live in a Christian society. I would say, well, I'm now a Christian living in a secular society. Mm-hmm. And it's being demanded of me that I follow secular law and Demas. Mm-hmm. I follow Demas's rule as the ultimate. And Demas right now says that it's perfectly acceptable to murder your child in the womb. So I'm now as a Christian being asked to submit to the ultimate of our current system. Mm-hmm. And that's a secular system. Everybody has an ultimate. Well, I mean, the, the, only, the only flaw I see in that is that you're not, you're not told you have to, so you're not told you have to have an abortion. Do you know what I'm saying? No, like no, no one's telling you like, hey, you better, <laughs> you better go having a bullshit. But in mean? China they do. Yeah, but, but that's that's that. I mean, China has many problems. <laughs> you know what I'm but, yeah. like, not, you know, we're not talking about a dictatorship. You know, right. we're talking about uh, it's somewhat of a democracy. Uh, and we can get into a China debate. Can I ask you one question? They're trying to tell us. Now watch this. They're trying to tell us we have to perform gay weddings or bake a cake for a gay wedding. Mm-hmm. And you, same, and same you thing. With that? No, we wouldn't. But that's the same. Mm-hmm. The same. I bet principle no, the same discussion fair enough fair enough and that's a, that's well, a point but i'm saying like in terms of like you know no one's telling so so i think the idea of democracy is that we all have this sort of guideline and you can still be a christian right i'm saying no one's trying to burn down your church and you go china i mean what they do to christians in china is crazy mm-hmm. you know what i'm it's saying crazy, they, yes. they're, they're, the way they get they 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 edit their bible right you know and they 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 uh they they don't let them uh, uh practice the religion how they want to practice it without right. harming any you know they, they, right you know harming anyone they just want to you know right they, they shut down their churches Right. You know, the, how, the, how the Christians are treated in China is, is disgusting. Yeah, and so the church we, we, is booming there yeah. too. Yeah. I'm sure it's it is, I'm sure like it is, crazy, yeah. but we can't, you know, and that's why when we, you know, and I, I do understand the point that uh, my friend made, uh, the Ginger King as you called him, I don't understand the point <laughs> you the made. The Ginger King. <laughs> the Ginger King. Yeah. I do understand that's a very yeah. good point that China, they're forced to have abortions, but we right. can't uh, judge uh, 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 a work in democracy based on a dictatorship. So I guess, I guess we'll, we'll ask China, China, Marcus, like, okay. China's messed Can up. I ask you the question and I'll let Marcus <laughs> ask? Please, please, please. And let me, ask, let me ask, you, ask you this question because I think it's an interesting point when yeah. you say, but you're not being asked to have an abortion. You're not being forced. Mm-hmm. Well, I would say that was the common argument and, and it needs to be brought up because it's, it's, it's really, really interesting, the parallels. That was the common argument for those who actually owned slaves. Mm-hmm. They were owning black people. They were abusing them. When people are saying, listen, you can't do that to that human being. You cannot treat them this way. You, you cannot do that. 
the slave owners did say, and it's on record, they said, don't want a slave, don't have one. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is in the way that you frame that, Jamali, I think it's important to highlight and to think about together is when you say, yeah, but nobody's asking you to have an abortion. I would say, well, God commands me to love my neighbor. Mm. And I would want to stand against any injustice against black people in the past, against uh, Mm. slavery today, against uh, child sacrifice today. I think that God's commandments are absolute. And I do think it's important in a society. Here's the thing. I think that the people who are professing faith in Jesus during the time of slavery, Mm -hmm. um, I think they were wicked. They were behaving Mm -hmm. wickedly, and I think that they needed to be called out and condemned. Uh, I think that they were on a completely wrong side, and uh, they were, of course, abusing the text of Scripture. They were contradicting themselves in Scripture. Um, I think that the, the society that was around at that time with slavery as legal, Mm -hmm. they had a moral obligation to fight against what was accepted as the norm. And in this case, we're talking about abortion. I know, Jamali, it's accepted. People just take it for granted today. Um, But I think that we're going to find 100 years from now, people are going to look back on this and say, I can't believe we were ever involved in such a thing. Uh, Which which may be the case. But um, also, if we're talking about this democracy, do you appreciate that? Even though, say, 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 uh, you, so you, it's all, the point I made before, no one's telling you you have to have an abortion, and you know what I'm saying? But then on the flip side is you are allowed legally to go protest it. Mm-hmm. So there has to be some appreciation Thanks for Thanks to the Christian worldview. You know, if we look at religious uh, dictatorships ever, or well, religious, religious, ide- uh, religious countries ever, you know, that yeah. democracy does. Christians have failed in history. Yeah, you know, but it, we, it fades away. You know, but we, we, we can, have to kind of look at that, you know. But we can't, yeah, no, we can't. You're right, mm-hmm. Jamal, and I'm going to say this. It's important for any Christian to not skirt the issue. Mm. If we ever see failures from Christians in history, it's important for me not to whitewash that. Yeah. But, but watch this. I can, as a Christian, look at the failures of Christians in history, and I can point to how I know they were wrong, because they said one thing with their mouth about what they believed, but they contradicted it with what they did. Mm -hmm. In other words, they weren't living according to the thing they said they were standing on. So that's important. I I can point to that. But, and this is important, too, and this is not just a flippant thing. And you, you said something, too. I watched one of your episodes. It was hilarious. Who are you talking to? Some dude you were talking to, and he was throwing out all these, like, statistics and all these things. And you, you said in your comedy bit afterwards, you're like, don't you hate when you talk to people and they throw out like stuff at you and you're like, I need to learn more because they're, t- <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're just throwing stuff out and yeah, I have yeah, no yeah, idea yeah, if it's yeah. true, right? Yeah. I thought that was like, it was insightful and it was, it was good. But truly look this up and I can even get your resources. All these things that you, that you and I take for granted today in our, in our cultures, uh, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, uh, freedom against uh, warrantless searches and seizures, um, all this stuff, the right to remain silent, truly, Truly, Jamali, Mm -hmm. that is stuff that didn't come to the world through the atheistic or secularistic worldview. Mm -hmm. It came to the world through the Christian worldview. There's an an objective basis for those things. So, yes, when I stand out of an abortion mill and I get to preach the gospel and call out to women to help them, that's a benefit of the Christian worldview. Atheistic regimes in history didn't give people freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. They don't. Atheistic regimes in history don't give people the gift of, of, of freedom from warrantless searches and seizures. It is explicitly the law of God that gives you those things, and we're all the beneficiaries of it. Mm-hmm. So thank God for Christianity, mm-hmm. even though it's waning today in, in our culture and society today. So you and I both, we all, we live as beneficiaries of the work of Christians before us. Now, don't get me wrong, Jamali. I would never want to say that there was some utopia behind us. Mm. There was hard stuff. There was failings. There was suffering. There were screw-ups. There was sin. But truly, what we have today before us in terms of blessings and goodness has come from the biblical worldview. Yeah. Do you, think, do you, think, do you, do you also accept that it comes from other religious texts as well? I mean, you know, sort of like the, the, the ideas of, you know, Islam and stuff like that and uh, Judaism and all these other uh, 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 religious texts yeah. and sort of, um, you know, Greek, you know, in democracy and stuff like that. All these other political worldviews have come from other things not just Christianity. So yeah, in terms of, uh, so say for example, if I was to address the issue of Islam, Mm -hmm. Islam is interesting because Islam uh, comes after the time of Christ and the scriptures have already been given to us. Muhammad was the last. Muhammad, yeah. yeah. And he's, Muhammad lived around uh, Jewish and Christian tribes. So Mm -hmm. he heard their stories and he interacted with them. Uh, And what Muhammad did is he borrowed um, stuff from the Bible Mm -hmm. and then he ended up changing the message and distorting the message. 
And so, yeah, there's a lot of commonality in terms of things you'll see in Islam that are common with Christianity, and that, was be, that would be because ultimately of, of borrowing. Mm. Uh, and in terms of, someone says, what about Judaism? I would say, well, I believe that Christianity is true Jewishness. Mm. It's true because mm. it's, 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 the, it's following the Jewish Messiah. I have the Torah and the Tanakh. I accept every word of the Old Testament. I you believe the New Testament the f- is well, the yeah. fulfillment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I w- of course, you would see that. You'll see the the parallels in many ways. I think a lot of times too, like Jamali, I don't have any question at all. If you and I went out to have dinner together, you and I would probably respond to an injustice that we saw the same way. Yeah, similar, yeah. We would feel the same. Of course. Yeah. And I believe that there's common, common ground between us because we're both made in the image of God and you're going to see a lot of that. And dude, you were, you were born and raised in London. Yeah. East yeah. London, yeah. You're, you're, you're also the recipient of a culture that was given to you by the biblical worldview in many ways. Yeah. I mean, well, you can't I mean, shake your Christianity. Well, I loose. mean, both sides of it. You know, I mean, I come from a, 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 a you know, and I, I, I be, I'm <laughs> with this episode, I'm trying to hard to skate away, skirt away from race, but uh, I'm, you know, I'm half Jamaican and we didn't have a, a, a good side of Christianity. We're still feeling that today, you know? Yeah. yeah so, you know, so to say, you know, I've had, uh, the, the the good influence of Christianity, yeah, I, and I don't, and I think you know there are certain laws and certain things that come from the Bible. And I think it's ridiculous to say they didn't, you know. Yeah. But uh, I've also had, uh, I've also seen the the bad side of it. I've seen the side Truly. of that that that, uh, that endorsed slavery in my ancestors. Truly. I've seen the side that sort of uh, uh, sort of hard gave him this sort of hard laden Christianity. Right. That still affects my country today. Yeah. You know you, exactly. So, so you, you, you know, had, I've seen both there, sides of this perspective, you know. True. There there are people in history that we could both rightly condemn mm-hmm. that professed love for Jesus and abused mm-hmm. other human beings. But just take this as a thought experiment. Mm-hmm. As a Christian, I get to condemn those Christians in history for what they did mm-hmm. because I have an objective basis. And I say, you're not, what you're saying is inconsistent with what you're doing. You said you stand on the scriptures, but you abuse these people. That violates God's commandments. But watch this. If you don't have Jesus, Jamali, and I mean this with respect mm-hmm. and complete no, say, say, respect. Say, 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 you if mean, you yeah. don't have Jesus and a biblical worldview, you don't have any real basis to complain about what anybody did to your ancestors, okay. which I think is abhorrent. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's evil and wicked and unjust what happened, uh-huh. but I get to complain as a Christian. But if you don't have Jesus, yeah, how do you complain? If your ancestors well, were mean, fish, well, I mean, you kind of, I mean, I, th- I think, I think, you, you, we get into a weird space here where we say uh, one text owns morality, and and you become the arbiter of what only you have morality. And I think then we come into a dangerous space. You know, I think, I think, I think, you know, you saying what what basis do you have of that? The fact that you know me, I fail to forget about the fact that I'm not Christian or whatever that. Yeah. The fact that I don't know my ancestors names yeah the fact that i know that you know certain people that you know i have genetic traits in my dna right because my ancestors were raped just what i'm saying yes. same, you know when you have when you have these uh specific things right you know to then say oh but you because you don't have this particular piece of text how do you know it's wrong can i it's share what, me, can I, I, I share what I mean by that no 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 I, I, i'm not offended by anyway no 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 I'm, I, it's, I it's, it's a good it's yeah. a good thing you're 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 showing the the solidarity and the connection mm-hmm. right and that's important yeah but watch if mm-hmm. if what i believe about the world and your ancestors and me and you mm-hmm. is not true that we're not in the image of god that we're not uniquely and wonderfully made by God. We don't have inherent value and dignity, right? We, are all, we weren't created with a purpose. If that's not true, and if it's true, the common theme of today in education and secular universities, if all of us came from stardust, if mm-hmm. our ancestors crawled out of the soup. So do you, do you not believe in evolution? I'm, I'm just trying to get the perspective now. You don't believe I do not evolution. believe our ancestors were fish. How old do you, how old do you think the world is? Uh, well, there's... Differing opinions, even amongst Christians, in terms of looking some, at some say it's like two thousand. Yeah, I've never heard that. Um, I, I would say between six and ten thousand oh, years. Two thousand. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So yeah 60, between, 60. Some people would say like between six and ten. Some people have gone as much as twenty thousand. Yeah, um, so, sorry, it's twenty thousand. Yeah, yeah, and so and there's fantastic Christians who are scientists and geologists that can make great arguments for that based upon the scripture and observational evidence. Even like dinosaurs and stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. You do believe in dinosaurs, of course. But you think dinosaurs were? Uh, I know. I know you don't. Uh, uh, have a specific date you're willing to stand by. So you say, I know it's too, too, 
Some people say, I know it's 20,000 years. Well, no, <laughs> but, yeah. So, for example, so you, the issue of dinosaurs, uh, God says he creates the land creatures on the sixth day. Mm -hmm. And we're included in that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, according to the scriptures, you would see dinosaurs and humans living ultimately together yeah, in the same space that? of time. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And not only do I believe it because of the certainty that God gives to us in his word, but observational evidence corroborates that story. So, for example, mm -hmm. and this is shown a number of times, you should check this out. Um, the last couple of years, Scientific American published an article where they found viable blood cells and tissues inside of a T-Rex's uh, bones. How do you find viable blood cells and tissues inside of a T-Rex when they died 65 million years ago? So what you have is even observational evidence mm -hmm. can point you to the fact that, he, that dinosaurs did not die off 65 million years ago. Uh, but actually are fairly recent in history. Yeah. And there's a whole biblical line of, of discussion and, and reasoning through that question. But, there, but, but, what, but it comes down to worldview. Yeah, but I think there's, a, there's a, a sense of, I mean, you could say worldview, but there is a sense of scientific data that, that correlates these bones of a certain age. Because the thing is, I think, I think, I think the, weird, the weird situation we can get into when it comes to science, and we're both not scientists here, you know, we might right. be debating flat earth, but <laughs> if, if we, <laughs> we get to this weird thing where... Um, where we where 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 we take uh, uh, science because there's there's two different types of science. There there is a science where you're trying to find an answer to the to to, to back up your own claim, yeah. and then when you're doing it uh, unbiasedly, and uh, you see a lot of like the the science that does come out because I know there's a there's a certain um, museum that has a, a, a Christian the creation aesthetic. museum creation museum yeah um, my buddy Ken Ham yeah Ken Ham you know it's like uh, you know the, and all those all those scientists are Christians. Yeah. So there must. So there might be. A, you know, there is a sort of. A, you know, like you're trying to find a. Particular but it, it's a myth to say that uh, these scientists are neutral. Mm -hmm. So, for example, when Dawkins examines evidence, how he's do you think atheist perspective. he's? A, no, no, I'm, I'm saying yeah. from both sides. I'm, 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 yeah. I don't think I'm just crapping on Christians. No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying <laughs> Look, every, everyone yeah. gets it. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> everyone no, gets it. Yeah. Yeah, no, nobody's I'm neutral. Attacking you on this. Nobody's yeah. neutral. But oh. we do have to be honest with the evidence. But check this yeah, out, yeah. Jamali. Check this out. Like, take, no, check again, it out. We'll do it. We'll take, it. Take, take this phrase as an example. Um, mm. I would say that, that everybody examines that evidence based upon their worldview. Mm. So watch this. A couple years ago, they find this prehistoric shark floating around. They catch it. They bring it to an aquarium, right? Mm. Crazy. Prehistoric shark. This scientist has this thing behind, this behind him. Goblin shark. Huh? You can look it up. It's a yeah. goblin shark. Yeah. <laughs> it's a goblin shark. Yeah. 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 He has it. He has it sitting behind him, right? Yeah. This thing's only lived for like 24 hours in the tank, and it's like they're looking at this dinosaur, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're like, jaws are on the floor. You know what this guy says? He's like, this is the most amazing discovery ever. These died 65 million years ago mm. while it's swimming mm. behind him. Do you see how worldview impacts us? Mm -hmm. Even when the evidence is staring you in the face, you'll reject what is right in front of you because of your worldview, even when it's swimming close enough to bite you on the butt, mm -hmm. right? And so, but, but going back to the issue that you brought up of like, we were talking about like science and like origins and morality, right? Yeah, yeah. I, you, I, I mentioned, I don't believe our ancestors are fish. Yeah, yeah. Well, watch this. We we're talking about a morality. Jamali, if the story today of origins and, who, and, and metaphysics and who we are today, our ancestors were fish, we're all just stardust. If Dawkins is right and there is no good and there is no evil, if, if the professor of biology at Cornell University is right and he says there is no good and there is no evil, it's only what is, mm -hmm. um, then that means that you and I don't get to make any moral complaints at all. Because watch. You can say, I have solidarity with my ancestors, and I respect that highly because I'm a Christian. But if you said, I have solidarity with my ancestors, I would say, fantastic. What does that have to do with anything? Mm -hmm. Who says what happened was wrong, objectively, morally wrong? If that was just protoplasm bumping into protoplasm, we have no moral complaints. Mm -hmm. We may not like it. It may be uncomfortable to us, but it's not wrong. Mm -hmm. If Dawkins is right, what happened to my ancestors, your ancestors, and anybody's ancestors was not wrong. Mm -hmm. It's just what is. Yeah. You see? No, I'm sorry. So that, that would be my, yeah, yeah, yeah. as a Christian, how I want to address it. No, I'm and, I don't, and here's the thing. Watch this. I think that it's depraved, deplorable when we treat other human beings like that. If, if like, for example, if you, if, you, if you said to me, Jeff, like what happened to my ancestors was evil, it was wrong, I think I should come into that with solidarity with you and say, yes, right? We should mm -hmm, grieve over mm -hmm. those things. We should grieve over slavery. We should grieve over murder. But we only get to grieve, Jamali, if we approach it with a biblical worldview. 
in any meaningful way. Mm. Because if our ancestors were fish and we're just stardust, then it's just what happened. Yeah. Stop complaining. Mm -hmm. And I think that that take, I think that robs you and I of our value and worth. Yeah. And that's why you need Jesus, Jamali. Oh, do I? Yes. Is this what this is? Yeah. <laughs> is this what you you tripped me in there? Yeah. Um, you gave me some barbecue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got your side of Jesus now. Um, <laughs> you so, stitch me up. Yeah. What the hell is guy? You got the bear to grab me just in case. Yeah, that's yeah, right. I ain't gotcha. even yet. Gotcha. Do you guys do you guys want to ask Jamali anything? You want to talk to him? Oh yeah, I just wanted to ask Jamali uh, like where your standards come from for morality and and what is just and unjust. Uh, where does that where does where do you base yours? Oh, your, me personally? Yes. Um, uh, my my sort of uh, uh, if we're gonna call it spirituality, is uh, I'd say personally I sort of I've gone through a, you know and I read a lot and I've gone through many perspectives. I try to 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 experience life and hear different philosophies and hear different things. So you know, like I'll speak to so I'll speak to a man like Jeff and he'll he'll tell me his perspective on the world and I and I'll sort of uh, gauge it to see what feels right with me and sort of go from there. You know. So yeah, so but I don't. I don't have yeah. a. I, but 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 to say, do I do I fully believe in a, a, a in a morality of one book? Yeah. So that's, so my that's, question. That's not, that's not really right. My so my question you know? would be, if you don't believe in an objective morality and everybody's mm -hmm. morality is based off of personal experiences, how can you say that your experience is, um, uh, your your the morality you base is is good or bad compared to let's say a slave owner mm -hmm. well because like, because they yeah, each yeah, I, give you, I do i'll give you a saying i think i think i think we evolve with thought and and uh and i think that there is a certain thing that like uh and i, th I think there is a inbuilt morality based in us and i think some people don't have that morality maybe or some people don't you know uh, listen to that part of the morality but i think there's something inbuilt in us like you know someone didn't have to tell me killing my mom was wrong do you know what I'm saying? I didn't need a book to tell me that I didn't need. I, that's just my personal. We would belief. agree with you. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. yeah. I would agree. agree with you. Don't, don't do that. that. You. Sure, she, she, it's she, built she, in. Sure, you got it's your mic in. around. I saw you not know that. She's about to grill me right now. But how do you know? Did Jesus tell you? I don't know. All right, I just no. But, uh, but seriously, you know, and like you know, for me, it's just like I, 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 I had that, you know, and I think that there is a certain inbuilt morality, and I think uh, as 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 life progresses, and you know, that's why I don't dis, dis, disrupt the claim of saying that, you know, when when. Jeff said, I don't agree with Jeff when he says all morality was come straight from the Bible. I don't personally believe that. I think, I think, but I do think, you know, certain perspectives did because uh, we've had so many uh, philosophers and we have so many uh, schools of thought. And I think what we've done is we've evolved with ideas and we've evolved with thoughts where we've, you know, we've come to sort of, uh, 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 what well, we're trying to come to a more connective moral understanding of how to navigate through this weird and wonderful life that we exist in, you know? So for me personally, it's a, uh, uh, it's it's more of a uh, you know from what 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 have come before us you know. So um, so if morality evolves, was there a time when mora uh, slavery was okay? No, no. I, I, I think I think that there's a, a overall thing. I I don't, I don't personally feel right that there's any a time. Say like if if I go back to me know, knowing when I was a kid not to murder my mum. I don't think there's a time when you can whip someone on their back until it bleeds. And they look around with sadness in their eyes, and you can ever justify that. And that's right. just me. Do you so know what I'm some, saying? Some morality. Because I think I think when we talk about uh, slavery, I think we've been talking about slavery a lot. And uh, I'll try to make, move it away from slavery because then it becomes into a weird racial debate. Okay. But um, it, it, if we're talking about slavery, I think when we talk about slavery, we kind of uh, diminish what it is. Okay. You know, so so talking, we can just we can put in any immoral thing. Yeah. No. No. I, know, I do understand what you're saying, but I, 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 don't, I don't mind you bringing up slavery. But I mean, it's, it's just a uh, you know I've done a whole series on race and <laughs> people think that's the only thing I talk about. So do you uh, think there will be a time where abortion is morally okay? Do you know what I I and I think I think that's an interesting perspective, and I don't know. You know, and I really don't know. I mean, uh, uh, I'm, you know, I, I haven't come to this doing this film with a objective viewer saying like I think everyone should have as many as you know i don't you know i think i think it's an interesting debate i really do i don't think uh, you should receive the death penalty for it uh, i don't really believe in the death penalty i don't think you should give uh, any government the right to kill its citizens i don't trust uh, any government that much to have the right to kill its citizens uh, i don't mm -hmm. really i don't believe in the death penalty or capital punishment personally um do, uh, uh, I don't think you know my 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 uh, my ideas right now on abortion is I don't think it should be used as a method of uh, contraception. I don't think it should just be <laughs> a thing that you know you you know you just, you just get as many you know. 
but uh, I think I think it's a very complex uh, issue, and I need to find out more about it before I fully commit to a a hundred percent perspective on it. But uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, I do. I, I do yeah. think it's a, a very complex issue, and I think it uh, I think it does come a lot down to ownership of body, and it comes down to choice. And um, I think I think but I think uh, both sides of the debate need to come to a more of a reality based idea of what the situation is you know mm -hmm. uh we I, agree. Think, I, th I think i think the i think you know the sort of uh pro uh life debate has its flaws and i think the pro-choice debate has its flaws and i think there needs to be a more of a an honest discussion in the middle about what this situation is so i think we i think both sides can come with a bit too much fire and brimstone do you know what i'm saying and yeah that, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it gets heated, nasty on both sides it gets, it gets nasty on both it sides does. and i think there needs to be more of a a, a middle thing in the yeah. middle ground person so you would be you would be open to more of an objective basis that's what the, i'm trying to do now i'm trying to, yeah i'm trying to you know i'm yeah. trying to understand the real so if i if we could so just watch this because i think it's in terms of more there's a hard issue going on too with all of us mm -hmm. as we talk about these things I, i'll just i'll just a thought experiment again okay. if if we could demonstrate conclusively and across the board that in every biological textbook mm -hmm. that at the moment of conception it's by nature a human being mm -hmm. that all the biological oh, so, so say, say one more time see so we're agreeing that so it if, is. if we were able to demonstrate okay right objectively that uh, at the moment of conception it is all the biological components of a human being it's just a difference of degree after that of, of growth right but well, like the, mean, you so who you are now yeah. it was at that moment genetically created mm -hmm. right um, at the moment of conception, you uh -huh. were by nature human then. And you uh -huh. were the you you are now. Uh -huh. The genetic code of you, your eye color, everything about you. Like, mm -hmm. you, were, you weren't going to come out purple one day. It was determined you'd come out this delicious caramel color. Oh, thank you very much. Okay? I appreciate that. But, uh, <laughs> right. it, it is a delicious color. Saying? But, um, but, uh, uh, it, you, but is that objectively the truth, though? Do you know what I'm yeah, saying? No, I think, it I think, is. I think, I think, see, but... Uh, I think like that's your perception of the truth. I don't. I, cause have, you read they, they, any, have you read any uh, textbooks no, 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 Listen, listen. I know you're fully more versed on this than I am. I'm not calling you a liar by any stretch right. of imagination. But what I'm saying is, is there has to be admittance that there is different ideas of thought on that subject. Sure. Do you know what like, I'm saying? And and and, and, and that's one of the issues with yeah. what I see in the debate there, is that there is uh, there is a very varied idea of what. Because some people say that that clump of cells is no more a human being than it is genetically a pig when it's in that clump of cells. But, you know can I'm saying? I address that? That, that? that would be important. You know? That is a idea. It, you know? If somebody made that argument, yeah. it would show their ignorance yeah. because it's not by nature a pig, it's by nature a human. And the only difference biologically speaking, and mm -hmm. this is, you can't refute this, nobody can. Mm -hmm. And most abortionists today, when they argue for this, they, they wouldn't attempt to muster an argument against what I'm, they would say, yeah, it's a human, and we can kill it. Mm -hmm. That's the point. It's a human and we're allowed to murder. We're allowed to kill it. They would say kill, not murder. But the only difference is size. Mm -hmm. It's very small. Level of development, it's not fully developed. Mm -hmm. Neither is a five-year-old, neither is a four-year-old or a mm -hmm. nine-year-old. Environment, it's in the mother. And degree of dependence, it's dependent. And we don't kill other human beings in any other situation mm -hmm. because of any of those things. Mm -hmm. But we do in the case of abortion. And that's why we're co so concerned because we can have very strong common ground here if we were just to say, what is it by nature? Human. And I think that it's a very slippery slope that you get on when you start saying, I can kill this human being over here uh, because it's not, in my mind, fully developed. They did that with black people. They did that with Jews in the Holocaust. I know it looks like a human. It's not a human. It's mm. a Jew. Mm. You see, that's the point. And, mm. and by nature, it's human. And of course... Biblically, God says, image of God, mm. protect it. And so, so yeah, I'm glad we're having this discussion. We can oh, go on good for, time. Yeah, we we, we, we go on uh, One question, I know, I know you're probably going to wrap up in a bit. Yeah. Um, it, going back to your point, because I remember you were saying about the gay cake yeah. and stuff like that. The gay cake. The gay cake. Gay cake. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're going about the gay cake. Yeah. Um, so do you think um, uh, that you as a man in America right now, and, and female, that you are being restricted to for, to live as a Christian. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you yeah. because we were talking about like the yeah. idea and you said, well, yeah. you get, they're making us do gay marriages in the church yeah. and making us uh, do uh, gay cakes and stuff. So do you do you think that it's, you are being restricted to be a Christian in this country? That's today? a really good question. I would say not quite yet, but it, like the writing's on the wall. You think like, so, really? Uh, yeah, I would say. In what way? Well, I mean, we have several cases already in the U.S. of, we we've, 
we know people that are Christians. They were bakers, and they were they had to close their business down. Friends of ours mm. had to pay. I don't even know how many. Hundred thirty thousand. Hundred thirty thousand dollars because they wouldn't bake a cake for a gay couple. Mm. Um, so the it seems like the liberal agenda is definitely trying to uh, force that upon us, and that's why we're trying to fight against it. You see, because you say liberal agenda, it's, sure. it's, I, I find it interesting, especially especially because it's not it's really still quite different to it's back home, where uh, Christianity or religion. It's sort of so interlinked with politics. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. saying liberal is is a sure. political idea. You know what I'm saying? It's sort of like how Christian. Because because some people, you know, I've met. Because uh, especially in England, like a lot of Christians are very liberal. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They're yeah, very, right, like, right, right. Like, There's a lot it's of just uh, cultural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not very, like it's, it's quite cultural. Yeah, it's quite a liberal uh, Christianity. Do you know what sure. I'm saying? Where it's more playing a guitar, wearing some sandals. Do you know what I'm saying? It's more of a that that basis, isn't it? So sure. it's quite it's quite interesting that over here. It's sort of more uh, like you know the liberals are making yeah. to make these cakes. Where in England, it's more of a, a you know. This, this, I, did I, you? I, I see more I'm gonna cut you off. Did you he, did you hear the story? Was it over in England? Uh, the story of the guy in Ireland named Daniel uh, from Asher's Baking Company. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think yeah. Because did that happen in Northern Ireland or Ireland? Northern Ireland. Yes, because that's part of England. Yes. So I mean, I'm not making a political statement. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's okay. yeah, 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 just, yeah, just so I can say I'm not making a political Don't statement. So there. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, you know. I know, I'm, I know. Uh, yeah, but, uh, but so, yeah, it's a part uh, of it. He has a UK government. When I was so in, we, when I was in Ireland, I, I I met Daniel, mm-hmm. and I I didn't know I was going to meet him. I did. He was at a church I was teaching at, and I sat down with him. His is an interesting case because even in his case in Northern Ireland, this guy came in and said, you know, I want you to bake this cake, and his family was like, very respectfully, we just we just can't do that. But what's interesting is that gay marriage is illegal in Northern Ireland, um, and he was still persecuted by the state, and he lost. Mm-hmm. And he was obeying not only, as a Christian, God's law, but he was obeying Ireland law. And mm-hmm. that is that in Ireland, gay marriage is not legal. Um, I think it is now. Is it now? Yeah, yeah. Wow. And, uh, Southern. No, no, is it Southern? I think, I, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna have to refer to my... Uh, is, is, gay, is gay marriage legal now? In Ireland, it is, isn't it? Is yeah, it? Like, I, think I, remember, I remember they had. But the, when he the did it, big thing, yeah. Ireland law um, didn't allow for gay marriage. Yeah, so yeah. he was in that case. He was obeying even Irish law, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but he was he was still, in a sense, punished. Mm. He, he was punished. He was punished by the state because he refused to do something, you know, for a gay wedding, and he did something that was consistent with God's law and Irish law, but and what, he still was punished. Is where I mean, and it's going to sound facetious. I don't mean this because no, it's, no. it's going to sound like a, dis- a disrespectful question, but I really don't mean it disrespectful way. Where does it say in that book that you can't bake that cake for a gay? Do you know what I'm saying though? Like it, it's it sort of like uh, why why couldn't he have baked that cake? Let me put it to, in this way because he's not it's not like he's. I mean, because I do understand the debate more of I don't want to be the preacher in that ceremony. Like I can I understand that debate more, but. In terms of you baking a cake, you're, you're providing uh, a capitalist service. I understand. You're yeah, not no, providing a moral, either way. It's not morality. Mm. It's yeah. just a capitalist service that you're providing. It's yeah. like, sure. I don't think if you, if you own a shop, and a taco shop, and a, a gay couple walk in, I don't know if, I don't think you have the right to say, I'm not selling you a taco. I agree. Do you see what I'm saying? Not no, selling. Like, I, I don't agree with you. There, because you know what I'm saying? Because I think the, you, you, you have a capitalist duty. It's a category <laughs> just, error. Just, yeah. But it's a category error, and I appreciate the question. Mm. It's a category error when someone says, I don't think you should be able to say to a person, I'm not going to feed you because you're gay. Mm. But we're not talking about feeding somebody a taco. We're talking about something being used for a ceremony to celebrate an idea. Mm-hmm. So, for example, if somebody came in to... Um, uh, Let's go back to it because it's important. I think, I think it, it hits the point because we all feel the same. We have the same hatred for this. If somebody back in the days of any slavery... Anywhere, oh, you love a bit of slavery. <laughs> I do. Because it's you know, common you know, ground. You slavery metaphor. It's common, it's common <laughs> ground. It's slavery. common ground. You use slavery if, all the other if, if somebody said, hey, <laughs> I go to the shop. I want you to build me some shackles yeah. and a nice whip. Mm. What's the whip for? Is it for a horse? No, no, no. It's for these guys I'm capturing over here. I want you to build me nice shackles mm. and a nice whip. Like, but I know what you're using that for. I'm not doing that. Someone says, hey, capitalist society, you don't have any right to decide, like, not to serve me. Yeah, I, get, I do, I do get it's what you're saying. It's a moral issue. I get 100 what you're saying. Yeah. But, well, I mean, I think it's weird to kind of use this. I know you're using it purely as a metaphor. It's and, a, metaphor, it's a, and it's a powerful it's metaphor. It's a morality. 100%. I do yeah. understand that, but. There, there is a massive difference between two people who decide they love each other. You see, there's a worldview. 
There's yeah, a world there. No, but there is a difference, man. I mean, do you, do you think it's the same... Cr- do you think it's the same crime of morality? Do you, do you not see that there's a difference there? Because, I mean, like, the, do you think that there is... I know, a, no, no. I, 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 I'm, I'm just using it in the sense of a I know, I know, issue. I know, but I'm, I was asking a question. Not like, comparing uh, homosexuality uh, with, or, or any transgenderism with slavery and mm. capturing human beings and beating them. I mean, in the sense of just a moral issue. Mm. So if somebody asks me to celebrate anything that God has spoken clearly about in terms of, mm. don't do that. Mm. Um, I think that it's a, it's persecution ultimately and oppressive um, to, to demand that I do something that would celebrate something God says is and not good. do you think good. if you bake a cake for someone you're celebrating it or do you think you're just providing the service? Because I know what is the cake's being used for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's being used to celebrate an idea, mm-hmm. right? Uh, now, here's the thing. I have affection and love for people who are, who are homosexual. Um, I care about gay people. I love them with a passion. I want them to know Jesus. Uh, however, um, when it comes to someone saying... I want you to do something that would violate what Jesus says is God's created order. Mm. I think that as a Christian, you have a right to oppose. Now, and your question was ultimately not about like the ins and outs of that. It was about like, do you feel like that that's actually coming on you now in a sense of persecution in the mm. nation? And I was just bringing up an example like with Daniel in the UK. Yeah, awesome. He's he struggled with that. It's happened in our own nation. I think it's getting worse. And there's an article today from a famous gay activist talking about the fact that Christians should be punished. For their um, uh, for their rejection of the idea mm. that homosexuality is a good thing, Christians should be punished. Mm. So it's coming. Now watch this. This is awesome, Jamali. Check out how like this works. Seriously, people have said in the past, America still has laws in the books that say blasphemy is a crime. Mm. There's blasphemy laws on the books in the United States because it was a Christian culture. And do you think that's right? Do I do I think it's, it's yeah blasphemy it's, should be a crime? Uh, and it's in it, it depends it depends on which it depends on how you mean that mm-hmm. right. But here's the point. Every law, ha- every, every system has blasphemy laws. In the U.S. before, when this was a more Christian culture, blasphemy against who? Jesus. But today, it's mm-hmm. not blasphemy against Jesus that's against the law. It's called um, hate speech. Mm-hmm. And it's blasphemy against the LGBT culture. Mm-hmm. So every law, has it, every system has its heresies. Every system has its blasphemy laws. Every system has its theocracy, the ultimate standard. It's a question of which ultimate what standard and today we're in a situation where we've moved away from a christian culture and christian law to now the blasphemy laws have switched it's not blasphemy any longer to denigrate jesus but it is blasphemy to say that homosexuality is sin Mm -hmm. or to preach it in the street we've had friends have been arrested Mm -hmm. in the uk and in canada for simply standing uh on a street and mentioning that homosexuality is sin yeah do they say do they say that or did they say you know fags go to hell (laughs) <laughs> our our friends be, wouldn't have said that. No, 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 I was saying your friends would, but yeah. our friends they, wouldn't. You got those, um, what are they called? Uh, the Westboro. Westboro, yes. evil. They're not yeah. our friends. The West Disgrace- Disgrace- For the record, Westboro Westboro is not our friends. <laughs> evil, disgraceful. They yeah. denigrate the gospel. I, I'll yeah. be honest with you. I would probably, if I was in like an event and I saw Westboro Baptist there doing what they were doing, I would probably ignore for a moment the people that, that don't know Christ that I would want to talk to. And I would go for Westboro Baptist and confront and condemn them mm. for their denigrating the gospel mm. with their hateful, awful behavior. Yeah. But to answer your question, I, I've got video footage. My friend merely read the text of Romans 1 where it talks about homosexuality, just read it in England, mm. and he was arrested mm. for reading Romans 1 mm. from the Bible. Um, and that's where we are today because every, every place has its ultimate. Mm. It's a question of which ultimate is true. Mm. And that's why I want you to know Jesus, Molly. <laughs> I, I, got a, I got a hypothetical question for you. So yeah, uh, if there was a 40-year-old man that was a, a pedophile and wanted to and was going to marry, say, a five-year-old boy, mm-hmm. and they asked you to do stand-up for his wedding, yeah, would you, one, do it, two, would it be right for the state to obligate you to do yeah. it? Yeah, no. Of course I wouldn't do it. Right. No. no. But this is the same thing. Is it flights and hotel? No. Obviously. obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, do, do, you know, do, do you know the book? Up? Like, was there, is that a gig up for that? <laughs> no, I'm joking. Joking. <laughs> obviously I'm joking. But um, no, I, look, I, you know, um, see, again, it's, 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 and I do understand the question. I do understand it's a hypothetical and I think yeah. we need to ask hypotheticals here. But I do think we run into this weird ground when we talk about one thing. And I know it's my perspective and my perspective sure. is, you know, that I don't think being gay is 
as bad as being a pedophile and you could say well how do you know that right. i just i just i just believe but they just they love each other no i, I two I, people that love a, each other yeah but the thing is is like uh uh if we're talking about pedophilia we you know it's a weird ground we're getting into now but sure. we're talking about you know it, having sex with a child kills that child <laughs> do you know what i'm saying like you know it can it can it can kill that child having sex with a child do you know what i'm saying we're talking about sure. two adults sure making a consensual decision do you know what i'm saying and then to, to say that oh but what about what about a nonce and it's like sure. yeah but you know we're talking about a five-year-old child who can't make a decision you you, you don't know your sexuality at five do you know what i'm saying right. it, yeah. or you know oh. and you're still trying to find but, who you are as a person but you agree with the moral premise that if something is you believe immoral yeah, yeah. you shouldn't be obligated to do anything for it I, I i i do i don't think you should be like morally obligated to, to go i don't think you should be forced to go to the wedding or none of that but i think we get into a weird ground when you're when we have a system of like you know you're there to provide a particular service financial service yeah. capitalist service mm -hmm. and then you start picking and choosing who you decide now and, and i might be wrong with that yeah just you know i'm saying i'm not I'm, you know and i'm i'm, I'm pretty open-minded to that yeah. you know and i think that but then at the same time i believe in freedom so there is a you know there is a that's why you need a, an objective standard a, but you that's say why that. you need jesus i Jamal, mean you right? say that you say that jeff uh, <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't done sinning yet let me let, a couple more years of sin i'll come back yeah <laughs> let me let me enjoy my life a little bit and then i'll come back you really enjoy it <laughs> But uh, you know, I'm very play with you. I know, I know. But um, you know, uh, but I, I, I think that even though I do understand your question, and obviously I wouldn't do the gig, but I think it's, uh, I think it's very chalk and cheese, and I think it's uh, a weird ground to, you know, try and link it. Very what? Chalk and cheese. I know. Chalk and cheese means uh, uh, a chalk and cheese. Chalk and cheese. It's ch did you say chug and cheese? No, chalk. Chalk. chalk? Chalk. chalk, chalk, no, not 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 chalk, <laughs> chalk, mate. Chalk. That's what we're talking about. Chalk, brother. Yeah, chalk. We're talking about chalk. Uh, chalk. Is it like you talking oh. about chalk? Oh, chalk, <laughs> chalk. Is that what you're saying? Chalk, chalk, chalk in it. This with your with your you with, with your that. trunk. <laughs> <laughs> chalk and cheese means two totally different things. Uh, right. Like they're, 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 they're both. Now they said yeah. chugging cheese. I, yeah. yeah, you're chugging cheese. You're brother. chugging cheese, bro. All right, bear, you're chugging cheese, bro. Yeah. All I right. would say liquid cheese is a fairly new. Got to say all this stuff. I had, a, I had a, really, a really fun time. I'm glad you did. I had a really good time. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm we, sorry. I'm sorry we love having it. you. Yeah. No. No. You're time. awesome. This, love is, this is how back. we do the show. I'd love to come back. You can come yeah. back anytime. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, so we're gonna finish up the show today. It's awesome having Vice here. Um, I think we recorded this ourselves that, that, as that's, well. That's the whole show. Yeah. That's been yeah. over an hour. I, we didn't even take any breaks. I yeah. do have I do have one clip I would be in sin if I didn't play for Jamali. Oh. And hopefully this doesn't break any sort of copyright things for you, but here we go. Your beard is good. <laughs> oh, that's it. <laughs> that was it. That's it. Your beard is good. <laughs> oh, sweet. That's so it. That's we, it. We're going to play that for you, people with delicious yeah, yeah, beards. Yeah, yeah. And you have a delicious oh, beard, thank sir. You. Yeah, you're welcome. A very delicious beard. Big so, guy. Thanks, man. Oh, thank you. You're really me. welcome back anytime. Appreciate it, man. All right, guys. So this has been Apologia Radio. Thank you guys for joining us. Don't forget, guys, you can go to ApologiaStudios.com, get more content. You guys can sign up for All Access, partner with us in the mission to bring the gospel around the world. Don't forget, guys, the good news, God becoming a man in Jesus, living perfectly, righteously, dying for sinners and rising from the dead. We call the gospels to turn from sin to trust in Christ. Receive forgiveness and salvation. That was Luke the Bear. Peace out. Enjoy the girl. See ya. Marcus King Ginger. See you later. Jamali, thanks, man. Thanks so much. All right, guys. Catch you guys next week. ApologiaRadio.com.